The same way a sketch artist is able to illustrate human faces based on a spoken description, would it be possible to train a neural network to do something similar? The goal of this project was to be able to give a neural network a text-based description of a face and have it produce faces with the appropriate features. To do this, I first had to figure out how neural networks actually generate images. There are many different types of generative models, but the most common are GANs. GAN stands for Generative Adversarial Network, and it's an architecture for training neural networks to generate data. Now, since this project deals with generating images, the style of neural network I'll be using is convolutional neural networks, and they're traditionally used for tasks like image classification and object detection. Now, I'll also need data for this project, and since I'm trying to generate faces, I found a data set called Celeb A, which is a collection of over 200,000 celebrity face shots. Now, GANs are unique as opposed to traditional neural network architectures where you're only training one network for one task. A GAN works by training two networks in parallel. The first network is the generator, and it's meant to generate images from some random noise. The second network is the discriminator, and its job is to simply determine whether a given image is real or fake. The reason this architecture is able to work is by using something called adversarial training. What this means is each network is essentially trying to find weaknesses in each other, which in turn forces the corresponding network to fix those weaknesses, therefore improving the network overall. First we start with the generator. The input to the generator is a random noise vector, usually of a uniform distribution between 1 and negative 1. For this project, I used a vector with a length of 100, and that seemed to be adequate. The generator then outputs some new images. At first, the images are terrible because the network has no idea how to generate faces. Then we give these images to the discriminator along with some real images of faces. The discriminator then tries to make a prediction about whether the given image is real or fake. The discriminator also has no idea how to tell what is a face and what isn't, so its predictions are essentially random at first. We can then take those predictions and generate a loss function for how good the discriminator did. This loss function is then used to train the discriminator just like a standard neural network using backpropagation. However, what's interesting is that this loss function can also be used to describe how well the generator did, because if the discriminator did a poor job at determining the real from the fake images, that means the generator did something right. This process can be basically described as a minimax game, where the discriminator is trying to minimize its loss function but the generator is simultaneously trying to maximize the same function. So using a standard GAN architecture is enough for generating random faces, but in order to add some structure to the images, I ended up using a variation of GAN architecture called conditional GANs. The only big difference between the two architectures is conditional GANs include labeled information about the images. The idea is that the network will learn what about the real images is represented by the labels. It can then use this to create images with the same features. Luckily, the data set that I used also came with labels for each face about their characteristics. I chose to use only a select few features that were fairly common and not subtle, as using too many detailed features would be too difficult for the network to learn. I simply encoded these labels into a vector where one represents an image with the feature and negative one without. When I want to give a text-based description, I just pull out key words in the text that represent the features that I want, and then I assign the corresponding indices in the vector to positive one values. However, once I started training, I ran into a problem where all my images seemed to look the same, and they didn't look anything like real faces. After researching, I realized that this is a very common problem in GANs known as mode collapse. What happens with mode collapse is the generator learns to focus on a mode in the distribution that can consistently fool the discriminator. More simply, imagine the distribution of every face image in my dataset as a graph with lots of peaks and valleys. What a generator is supposed to do is generate new samples uniformly across this distribution. Mode collapse, however, is when the generator learns to generate on a specific peak in the distribution. From what I've researched, there's no way to prevent mode collapse entirely, but there are ways to get around it. I ended up using a strategy adopted from an architecture called VGAN. 
VGAN attaches a second network to the generator which tries to reconstruct the original noise vector. This adds a correction to the generator's weights which helps to keep it from collapsing. After training with these adjustments, the results looked a lot better, however there still were some evidence of minor collapse. Another problem I noticed is that some of the faces were warped in weird ways. I suspected that this was because not all the images in the dataset were uniform. Some of the faces were oriented in strange ways. To attempt to fix this, I used a face detection algorithm to determine if there was a full face in the image. If not, then the image would not be included in the training set. Doing this I found that there were less warped faces than before, however some of the images were still very noisy, but I assume that this is because not all the images in the dataset were the same resolution, some were very low res. As far as how the generator performed when given a written description, it seemed that it did not fully learn the condition labels. This could be simply because it wasn't trained for long enough, but I believe that it's partially due to the quality of the labels in the dataset. I noticed that some of the images were mislabeled for things like hair color. Also using more samples could help, but I found that my computer couldn't handle more than 20,000 samples at a time. I may revisit this project at some point in the future, but for now, the quality of the samples is good enough that I can feel comfortable moving on. I had a lot of fun experimenting with different network architectures, and I learned a lot doing this project. If any of you are interested in learning new things like this, I highly recommend you just come up with a project idea and just go for it. Even if it seems out of your league, research and hands-on experience is the best way to learn in my opinion. Also, I'd like to just say thanks for 4,000 subscribers. I'm glad that so many people enjoyed this content, and if you're interested, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I upload. And now I'm going to leave you guys with a quick time lapse of the network learning to generate these faces. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.